Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's my commercial photography website. It's a Squarespace one and I absolutely love it. They're easy to set up, they look amazing, there are hundreds of templates to choose from and they have first class customer support. If you want one too, then use this URL and the coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this episode, we're going to go back to basics. I mean, real basics. What we're going to do is just show you how to hold a camera. Now, this might sound a little bit simplistic. It might sound a little bit obvious, but it is actually quite important. I take it for granted, and a lot of pro photographers take this sort of thing for granted, experienced photographers. But if you're starting out in photography, this might be something that you've got no idea about. Now, uh, first of all, I've just got a 70 to 200 zoom lens on there. Um, I've got the lens hood on, which uh, reduces flare, cuts out any extraneous sunlight from glancing off the front element of the lens. The other thing that it's useful for is to protect the end of your lens from getting scratched so that you don't bang the end of the lens. I always keep my lens hood on. Now, holding the camera, um, you've got your hand grip here grips in there, you've got the shutter release button, quick dial here, quick dial on the back on this particular model. So there's my main grip for the camera. But what you don't want to be doing is holding the camera like this and then trying to focus or zoom like this because you're not supporting the camera. The camera is uh, moving around or the extended distance here is moving around. So what you really need to do is bring that camera in close to your body. The eyepiece has got to come into your eye, lock against your eyebrow. So that pivot point, this pivot point, and then this hand forms your tripod effectively, the three contact points that are giving you that stability as if it was actually a tripod. Now, if you're doing that with these contact points. So if you're doing that like that, you don't want to be standing like this with your feet together. If you're standing like this, you're going to be swaying, you're going to be moving around. So take a step apart, step your legs apart, get into a position where you're forming almost a sort of tripod form shape as well with your legs. Then support the lens underneath here and then you can use your hand and your fingers to zoom and to focus if necessary and then your other hand on this side. So let me just show you this way around. You can see there, my legs are apart. Nice, solid, steady grip. Hand is supporting under the lens. And then if I turn around this way, you can also see from this direction. So that's the basic position for holding a heavier camera with a zoom lens. Now you can apply that position for holding uh, any lens camera body. That's what I would recommend. Now there's a few variables to that. Sometimes you need to be seated to take a shot. So if, I'm, if I want to be seated, now if you want to lie down for a shot, that's straightforward enough. Straight onto your belly, same thing. Form a tripod with your elbows. Brace the camera against your uh, eyebrow with the viewfinder. And then you've got that three point again, locking the camera in position. The whole idea is to reduce the amount of movement, reduce the amount of vibration. So that's lying down that way. If you want a position seated, often go into a sort of cross-legged position and then rest my elbows on top of my knees and then hold the camera in that position. Now, if you really are working in low light and you're down to very low shutter speeds, I recommend actually breathing out, exhaling, and then pausing and shooting on the pause when you're exhaled. If you're holding your breath, you get a little bit of vibration, but when you exhale, you've got a few seconds where you've got that bit of calmness, uh, where your body's not moving quite so much. I find that technique works really well. Now, if you are really working in low shutter speeds, uh, low light conditions with longer telephoto lenses, then try and find something else to brace yourself. Follow me over here and just check this out. So if you're in those low light conditions, then try to find something you can actually use, okay? So here, for example, I'm gonna push my body, force my body against this tree, okay? And then I've got my weight pushing into the tree. And then same thing again, I can lock myself into the tree. The tree is becoming part of the steady platform for me, okay? So that will help. So look for, look for items, for objects that you can use that will help you. Things like even park benches or walls. The other thing, the other technique that I use quite a lot is actually just to form my hand into a fist and then I can rest the camera on top of that, like so. 
and use that as the platform or you can directly rest the camera on the actual object as well but sometimes just using your hand just to, just to soften it a little bit can just take the vibration down a little bit and you can find ways of using objects to your advantage to support your camera. Now how low can you actually go with your shutter speed? Well it's quite interesting there's a nice rule of thumb that you can apply with uh, most cameras and lenses. The focal length of your lens if you take the focal length of your lens that you're working at so say for instance you're shooting at 200 millimeter then a good rule of thumb is don't go lower than two hundredth of a second or if you're shooting on a 50 millimeter lens then don't go lower than 50th of a second that's a good rule of thumb but I often quite shoot much much lower than that so if you're shooting with uh, say a super wide angle lens at say 16 mil uh, or 20 millimeter focal length then you can get your shutter speed down to a fifteenth of a second and I quite often shoot with my super wide angle lens at a quarter or an eighth of a second for street photography and that's fantastic for allowing a little bit of motion blur on people walking by or traffic moving or other elements of your pictures actually let me bring up a couple of pictures for you now for you to see what I'm talking about so you can see here in these pictures we've got some motion of the traffic going by here or motion of people walking movement in the picture and these were done handheld at low shutter speeds with a wide angle lens so don't be afraid to experiment using lower shutter speeds handheld. You can do it if you adopt these sort of brace positions and those body positions with your camera.